<laughs> so growing up, my brothers and I would play a game called Balcony Paper Toss. The person who could catch a piece of paper at the bottom of the balcony the fastest won. But our dad didn't want us playing the game because he didn't want us running up and down the stairs. So we just started playing the game when he wasn't home. I was never that good, so my brothers would always tease me for being too slow. And I got tired of it. I started practicing and practicing and practicing because I wanted to be the fastest so I could laugh at them. I finally beat my oldest brother's fastest time and I started celebrating. Come on, y'all. Let's play balcony paper toss. Both of my brothers were acting really weird, saying that they didn't want to. What? Are you guys scared? Come on, Dad's not here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was in trouble now. See it, Desmond. Right, don't want to be a... Oh, so you want to play balcony paper toss after I told you not to, huh? I'm sorry, Dad. I was just trying to have some fun. Well, let's see how fast you really are. One. Oh. A two. Follow or subscribe for more childhood stories. So just like any other kid, I used to share beverages with my parents. But once in a while, they wouldn't share with me. And when I asked why, they would say, Uh, because this is parent juice. Yeah, parent juice. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, I didn't think anything of it. But as I got older, I got more curious. One day, my dad left the so-called parent juice on the table, and I couldn't help myself. I took one sip, and my head exploded. I had so much energy, and I couldn't control myself. Boy, what's wrong with you? Oh, what's up, dad? When you get here? I don't know what it is, but I got a lot of energy. So I'm cleaning the whole house. How does it look? Does it look good? Does it look good? Oh, I feel like dancing. Da, 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 da. Oh, I feel so great. <sighs> Boy, what's wrong with you? My dad looked at the can and picked it up. Boy, do you drink this parent juice? Boop, 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 maybe you were about to get it. But with that parent juice in me, he couldn't catch me. Get back here! So let me tell you about the time my dad and I got lost in the woods. My dad and I were the first ones dressed on our family vacation. My dad said, let's go hiking real quick instead of waiting around for everyone else to get dressed. Hiking with my dad was so much fun. He taught me some stuff about nature. The weather was perfect. It was just some good quality time with him. But suddenly he got really quiet. And I already knew what that meant. Hey, Dad, we're lost, aren't we? He turned around and said, Yup. We looked at our phones and neither one of us had phone service, which means we couldn't call anybody for help. That's when I started to lose it. We were walking around for hours without a clue where we were going. And I'm not going to lie. I thought we were going to be stuck out there forever. But suddenly, we walked past this toy that I remember seeing on the ground when we first started. I told my dad I knew how to get out the woods, but he didn't want to listen to me because I was so young. But thankfully, he finally listened and we found our way out. But when we got back to the resort, there were police everywhere, simply because because our family didn't know what happened to us. Desmond, I guess that was a bad idea, huh? Follow or subscribe for more childhood stories. So this one time, my family and I went on a vacation, and my mom's friend and our son came too. The boy and I were around the same age, and for a while, we were getting along. But the more we played together, the more I realized that the kid was completely crazy. His main problem was he would just take things way too far. While we were on a resort, at first, it was funny watching him go crazy. But then, it started getting really annoying. I was just trying to have some fun, but he was ruining every game that we played. And by the end of the day, I didn't want to be around him anymore. So later on, our parents were in the store and we had to stay in the car. He was bouncing all around and all of a sudden, he pulled out this little toy. He said, do you want some ice cream? And I said, no. Then he pressed the button and the toy hit me in the face. That was the final straw. I beat him up right in the car. And as our parents walked out the store, he jumped out the car and yelled, Desmond beat me up, Desmond beat me up. I thought I was going to be in serious trouble, but little did I know, my parents were tired of him too. <laughs> hey Desmond, good job. Follow and subscribe for more childhood stories. So my grandpa had the nicest lawn in the neighborhood. Everyone knew not to step on it or else. Well, when I was a kid, I accidentally rolled my bike right onto his grass, and he used me as an example of what would happen to anyone who stepped foot on his lawn. It was bad enough that it happened in front of everyone, but to make it worse, people teased me about it for years. It was really traumatizing, and eventually, all I could think of was grass. Desmond, uh, look at this picture and tell me what you see. <laughs> grass. Hmm, I see. And how about this picture? Grass. No, no. Use another word. Grandpa's grass. Wow. Oh, this is bad. No one could help me. I was just too afraid of grass. So I decided to stay away from grass from then on. Well, one day after school, I was about to head to my grandparents' house, but someone stole my bike. I had to walk. And when I got there, I saw Brayton with my bike on my grandpa's lawn. If you want your bike, then come and get it, little boy. I didn't know what to do because I haven't stepped on grass in months, let alone my grandpa. So what's it going to be? Suddenly, I seen a shadow. Get off my lawn and tell your grandpa. Grandpa, you saved me. Oh. 
Every parent deals with their kids leaving their toys out differently. Some yell, some threaten, and others just pick up the toys themselves. But at my house, my mom would just throw away any toy left on the floor. Before bed, she'd walk around with a trash bag to pick up any forgotten toy. She would sometimes toss in toys she bought that same day. I didn't want her throwing any of my toys away, so I started hiding them under the bed. Hiding toys under the bed is more difficult than one might think. Some toys were so big that I had to take them apart. Other toys were so small that they were a pain to find, and I get stuck every time I went under there but it was worth it at least i didn't have to worry about my mom getting rid of my toys but one day i was playing basketball with my brother and our mom threw out a big bag the only time she got rid of a big bag is when she did a deep clean in our rooms my brother ran into the house to check his room and came back out crying he said she threw out his xbox game i asked where he left it and he said under his bed i felt my heart stop i checked under my bed and all of my toys were going too then i heard the trash truck coming and when i tried to get out from underneath the bed i got stuck <sighs> What's wrong, little fella? I'm small, but I want to be bigger. <laughs> You're just a kid. When you get older, you'll get bigger. No, uh that's not how my species works. We need to hear good singing. Good singing makes us grow really, really big. I want to be bigger. Say no more. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> my new friend is small. Ooh. He wants to be bigger. Oh, no, man. I said good. It has to be good singing for me to grow. Take this. This is an auto-tune pill. Ooh. It'll make you pitch perfect. Mm. Then when you sing, I'll grow. Oh, yeah, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. Now sing. Oh, yeah, my new friend is small. He wants to be bigger Honestly, I'm lost I'm just trying to figure it out What this video's about Oh yeah, it's working, it's working Keep Just on trying saying. to figure it out What this video's about Oh yeah, I'm getting bigger I'm getting bigger I'm, you, I'm big now, you better start running You better start running Ooh, I didn't know you were bad He's a bad guy so when I was a kid, my parents never put out any Halloween candy. Anytime I ask why, they say, Because we ain't celebrating anything evil in this house. A lot of kids stopped at our house during trick-or-treating. But since we didn't have any candy, we had to pretend like we weren't home. I started feeling bad for all of the kids wasting their time walking up to our door. So to make it fun for anyone who walked up, I started scaring them. Although they didn't get any candy, the people I scared loved it. But my dad didn't love it though. Boy, didn't I tell you we ain't celebrating Halloween? Put away that costume. Instead of putting the costume away, I hired Yermi Yermi to take over for me. Yermi Yermi was a guy from my neighborhood that would do anything for five dollars. <laughs> Yay, five dollars. But one thing he didn't play about was not getting his money. Desmond, didn't I say hang up that costume? Oh, I'm not Desmond. Yummy Yummy's my name. Well, get off my doorstep with that costume on. Well, before I go, somebody owes me five dollars. No! Yummy Yummy chased my dad until he fell. You better gain my five dollars. Follow or subscribe for more childhood stories. Hubby didn't like Yermi Yermi because he always did a bad job when he hired him to do something. Then when Hubby refused to pay, Yermi Yermi would start chasing him. You better give me my money. So Hubby wanted payback. Where am I going to get a battery from? I think I might be able to solve your problem. What you talking about? Yermi Yermi ain't got no problems. Oh, I thought you needed a new battery for your Wii Whacker, but never mind. Oh, I do, I do. Give it to me. Not so fast. I'll let you use this battery, but you got to give me $5 every time you cut somebody's lawn. Well, I'm going to be charging people $10. So if I give you $5, that's... That means I'm still gonna have five dollars, yeah! Hubby smiled and gave Yermi Yermi the battery. Now that the Wee Whacker worked, Yermi Yermi started looking for lawns to edge. He found his first customer and did his lawn, but the man wasn't satisfied. How long have you been doing this? Because you didn't do a good job. You're the first house that I ever cut. Well, it shows, and I ain't paying you nothing. Yermi Yermi doesn't play about his money and started chasing the man. You better pay up! Give me my money! The man was so scared that he gave Yermi Yermi his money. Yeah, ten dollars. So ever since Brayton was a baby, he had a stuffed dinosaur. He loved that dinosaur so much that he kept it on his shelf. Good morning, Dino. Ethan didn't realize that Brayton still had that dinosaur. And when he found out, he came up with a new prank. When Brayton wasn't looking, he took his dinosaur downstairs. Then he took a little speaker and put it inside of it. Hi, Brayton. My name is Dino. <laughs> this is going to be good. When Brayton came back to his room, Dino was on the bed. Dino, what are you doing on my bed? You belong on the shelf. Brayton, don't put me on the shelf. What? Who said that? Me. Your best friend, Dino. No! What's wrong, Brayton? All these years I had to hear you talk. Now it's time for you to hear me talk. But you're a toy. You're not supposed to talk. Who said toys can't talk, Brayton? Who said toys can't talk, Brayton? No, please don't hurt me. Please don't. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, Brayton. Wait a minute. I'm feeling kind of crazy. Hey, then. Uh, yes, Brayton. So it was you making Dino talk. You caught me, Brayton. But I don't care because I'm bigger and I'm stronger. And it's not that you can do about it, little boy. Ooh. So one night, Ethan was eating a snack, and out of nowhere, Brayton threw a sponge at him. Instead of throwing it back, Ethan had another idea. 
First, he took the sponge and cut it into a triangle. Then he put some icing and sprinkles on top. Mmm, what's orange and spongy? A sponge cake. <laughs> Brayton walked in the kitchen while Ethan was finishing up. Ooh, you made a cake. Uh-huh, you want to taste it? Is it soft and squishy? <laughs> oh, yeah, the squishiest cake you'll ever taste. Brayton took a big bite. This tastes like a sponge. <laughs> it is a sponge. Whoa, it looks so real. Why do you do this to me? Because I'm bigger and I'm stronger and there's nothing you can do about it, little boy. <laughs> I want my mommy. Get out of here, little boy. You know what, Grandpa? I'm going to tell everybody that you that you can do stuff. Go ahead and tell them that your Grandpa can move. Nobody's going to believe you. Mm, he thinks I'm so stupid. But what the old man doesn't know is that I have a plan. Uh, there. Aha, now that the camera's set up, I'm going to record Grandpa coming and everybody's going to know that he can move. Uh, Grandpa! 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 Hey, hey, Grandpa! Hey, stop with all that noise. What you want, Daryl? I'm hungry. Who? Oh, it's always something. What do you want? I want my Cheerios. Who? What are they doing up there? They're too high. I can't reach. Oh, no, Grandpa. I guess you're going to have to climb up there like you normally do. Hmm, I smell a setup. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dal. Grandpa, I can't reach up there. I'm too old. What are you talking about, Grandpa? You're always climbing up there. Nice try, you little poop. I see that camera up there. I'm sorry, Dal. I can't help you. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. I'm too old for this. <laughs> Ooh, next time, I'm going to get you, Grandpa morning at 5 a.m., Daryl's grandpa wakes up and goes for a run. He does it that early so no one can know that he can run. But one early morning, little Daryl couldn't sleep and woke up just in time to see his grandpa leaving. Ah, uh -huh, so this is what you do every morning. Tomorrow, I'm going to be ready and I'm going to get you, grandpa. The following morning, Daryl woke up before his grandpa. He pulled out his drone, which had a camera, and got it all set up. <laughs> I'm ready for you, grandpa. Daryl's grandpa came out the door right on schedule. <gasps> Another morning to stretch his old legs. Come on. As soon as Daryl's grandpa started running, Daryl got his drone in the air. What little Daryl forgot was that his grandpa loves drones and knows exactly what one sounds like. Hmm, somebody's spying on me with a drone. His grandpa tried to outrun it, but Daryl stuck with him. Whoever's flying this thing is good, but I know what to do. <laughs> he hid in the woods until Daryl turned the drone back around, and then he followed it. Yes, I finally caught him. Give me Whoa. that drone. I knew it was you. Give me that back. That doesn't belong to you. Sure, I'll give it back Get me. after I delete this video. Mm, this isn't over, Grandpa. Grandpa, please don't tell my mom. Look, Dale, my back hurts and I need some medicine, but I can't drive no more. Why can't you drive, Grandpa? Are you too old? I ain't too old for nothing. Let's just say Grandpa bent the rules a little bit. So that's why I got to tell your mom so she can go to the store and get me some medicine. Well, what if I drive you? Huh, little boy, you can't drive. You can't even reach the pedals. <laughs> yes, I can. Well, then prove it. Come on. For the love of Bob, can you please go faster? Grandpa, I'm not even supposed to be driving. And you want me to go faster? Yes, I do! Oh, Grandpa! Oh, Grandpa! Yeah, 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 yeah. Grandpa, no, 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 no! Stay in the car, I'll be back. Grandpa, <gasps> is crazy! I got my medicine. I can do my dancey dance again. Whew. Hey, Dale, the door's locked. And it's going to stay locked until you tell everybody that you can move. Fine, I'll tell everybody. Hey, everybody, Grandpa can move. Look at me. Okay, I did it. When I say everybody, I mean my mom. You're going to tell her. So little Daryl, his grandpa, and his mom was getting ready for the end of the summer party. Hurry up, you guys. I'm not trying to be late to this party. Y'all always be making me late. Yeah, yeah, take a chill pill. Once I get my bow tie on, we can leave. What grandpa didn't know is that Daryl hid his bow tie. Take that, grandpa. Hey, Daryl, did you see my bow tie anywhere? I can't find it. I didn't see nothing, grandpa. I, I don't even know what color it is. Hmm, all right. I got a feeling that you're lying, Daryl. Where's my bow tie? Give it to me. Yeah, all right. Let me find out. Now, where's that bow tie? It was right here. Hey, Grandpa. Huh? Roses are red. Violets are blue. I know where your bow tie is, and I'm not telling you. What? If you want your bow tie back, I'll show you the way. But first, you got to tell my mom that you can move today. Look, Daryl. Daryl's grandpa took out another bow tie. What? Where did that one come from? I have a lot of these. I just wanted that one because I hate losing them. Mm, this isn't over, Grandpa. Well, it's over right now. <laughs> At the party, I'm going to show everybody that you can move. So little Daryl, his grandpa, and his mom were running late to the party. I'm so tired of y'all always making me late to stuff. Well, don't look at me. Look at Daryl. Dad, leave Daryl alone. He's not doing nothing but looking out the window. Yeah, whatever. What's he even looking at? There's so much to see every time you drive into town. What you talking about? But all I want to achieve is catching my grandpa moving around. You annoy me to my bones. I really wish you stayed home. Ooh, just leave me alone, yeah. I'm not stopping 
till my mom knows you're dead. Well, I guess you're gonna keep on waiting, Daryl, because I ain't getting caught. There's so much to see every time you're driving into town. Yeah, I guess so. But all I want to achieve is catching my grandpa moving around. They finally got to Brayton and Aether's house and headed in. When we get in here, Daryl, you better not mess with me. I can do whatever I want, Grandpa. So while little Daryl and his grandpa were walking into the cookout, Daryl said he forgot something at the car and went back. He grabbed the bag from under the seat, and inside the bag were swimming trunks. But they weren't just any swimming trunks. They were dissolvable swimming trunks, which means water makes them disappear. Now, Grandpa, I know you're not about to wear those ugly swimming trunks. Why are you talking about ugly swimming trunks? You don't know what you're talking about. All I'm saying is that they make you look a little old. They make me look old? What? They do? They sure do. Huh. But don't worry, Grandpa. I bought you a new pair. <laughs> Dal gave his grandpa the dissolvable swimming trunks. Ooh. Oh, this thing is hot. What y'all doing in here? Cooking some ramen noodles? And moments later, his swimming trunks started dissolving. Go quick, hear me a tell. My swimming trunks are disappearing. <laughs> I know they are, Grandpa. And now you gotta come out and get your own towel. Then everybody's gonna know that you can move. His grandpa started smiling and walked out the hot tub. You thought that was gonna make me run down? I like wearing no clothes in a hot tub. <laughs> Ew, Grandpa. Ew. This isn't over, Grandpa. You'll see. So after letting Nathan borrow my speakers, he told me to stay for the party. You're still here, Desmond? Yeah. <laughs> Good, because I'm about to sing a song. Oh! De Desmond, he look funny. Got more head than he got body. Is it swollen? Help him now. Some ice might bring the swelling down. Head so big, it don't even match your body. Don't even match your body. You don't got a forehead, you got a five head. Desmond has a big head. He got a big old head, he got a big old head. Yeah. Desmond has a big head. I'm looking at his head right now. After they were done singing, I really felt like I had a big head and I ran home. So I brought my grandpa to school with me on Bring Your Grandpa to School Day. It was going to be a fun day until Brayden and his grandpa came. Well, look who it is, Paul Dennis. Oh no, Eddie Smith. Wait a minute, you two know each other? Grandpa's name is Eddie? Yup, we go way back. Isn't that right, big head Paul? Who you calling big head? I've never seen grandpa that upset unless someone walked on his grass. <laughs> we'll be seeing y'all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grandpa, what's that all about? Eddie's been bullying me since the 60s, and it's time for me to show him what I'm made of. Anytime they saw each other that day, they would compete. So, Paul, what? how many grandchildren do you have? Uh, three. Oh, three, huh? Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's nice. Why? <laughs> how many do you have? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I have four. <laughs> oh, that's it. Put them up, Eddie. Put them up. Oh, I've been waiting 55 <laughs> years for this. Yeah, me too. Oh, my game, Britain. This won't take long. Hold up. What's this note? Wait, don't read that. Eddie wrote Paul a letter apologizing. <laughs> All right, Seth, your apology. Come on, friend, let's get some soup. Hey, maybe that could be us one day, Brayton. Shut up. So I've never actually skipped class before. I just found excuses to go to the nurse's office. The nurse's office was the best place to go when you didn't feel like doing any work. I've seen teachers fake being sick just to get out of work. The only problem was, if the nurse didn't feel like you were sick, she would send you back. One time, I pretended to lose my eyesight. Another time, I pretended to have a really bad headache. And of course, I tried to act like I had the stomach flu. But most of the time, she would tell me to stop faking and go back to class. But one day, I was so tired and I didn't want to stay in class. So I put my hand on my forehead and pretended like I was having another one of those really bad headaches. And I really sold it this time because I didn't want the nurse to send me back. Just when I thought I had her fooled, she asked me how long I had the headache for. I wanted her to think I was in a lot of pain, so I told her since the day before. Since yesterday? Oh. Oh, then I need to call your dad then. I froze when she said that. My dad knew my head wasn't hurting yesterday. And if she caught him, they would have known I was lying. Lying was a huge no-no in my house. So I hopped up and told the nurse I was healed. Follow or subscribe for more childhood stories. Brain the school bully was angry today and punched anyone he passed. There was no avoiding it. If you tried to run, he could catch you because he was so fast. If you tried to yell for help, by the time the help came, you already had a black eye. Even if you got away one day, he will remember and get you the next day. The only way to avoid Brayton's punches was to never be caught 
alone. So my friend Jackson and I bought air horns. Anytime one of us were alone and saw Brayton coming, we gave each other a call and stood together. Brayton knew he couldn't take us on at the same time. Why are you always next to each other all of a sudden? Well, why are you always trying to beat people up? Oh, you want to be smart, Desmond? I got something for you. <laughs> After lunch, while I was on my way to class, I heard a loud air horn. Oh no, Jackson needs my help. I ran as fast as I could to where I heard the air horn, but I didn't see Jackson there. Jackson! Where are you hiding? Over here, Desmond. I'm so scared of Brayton. I knew that voice, and it was not Jackson's. Brayton! Brayton punched me in the face. That's for trying to skip out on my punches. <laughs> So there was this girl, Brittany, who went to my school, and she was actually pretty nice. The only thing I didn't like about her was that she always wanted to help me. Without asking, she would bring me my favorite candy. She would sometimes show up at my house to help me with my homework, and she would always fall asleep on my arm during class. But one day, she came in class with this sweater, and she put it on me. The sweater was hideous, and everyone started laughing at me. Don't you just love it, Desmond? <laughs> I love it. Leave me alone, Brayton. Yeah, Brayton, leave him alone. Huh, you got girls fighting your battles now? <laughs> Come on, everybody laugh with me. <laughs> I was so embarrassed and mad at Britney. Don't listen to them, Desmond. That sweater looks good on you. No, I don't like this class. I don't like this sweater. And I don't like you. Woo! Brittany, you know, I wish you would just leave me alone. I felt bad after I said that. But before I could apologize, she punched me in the face. And then everyone started that. laughing at me again. <laughs> A girl that likes to beat up Desmond? That's me. You're my girlfriend now. Come on. As they were walking away, she blew me a kiss. She's going to get me in trouble. So Caden got a bunch of Christmas gifts and they started making messes all over the house the next morning. Destiny hates when the house is messy, so she told Caden to clean up after himself. A few minutes later, she went into his playroom to check on him. And of course he made another mess. She couldn't believe it. How does one kid make such a huge mess so fast? So while I'm trying to fix things around the house, she tells me to do something about it. Follow my page in three seconds to find out what I did. So I went into the room and pretended to yell at Caden because I knew Destiny was listening at the door. After she left, I helped Caden make an even bigger mess. When she came back in the room, we yelled, surprise! But she wasn't happy. In fact, she didn't say anything. She just left the house. 